54 feet long. There's a tunnel down through the middle for the chain to go in. To take the corn out. The plates on the side of the crib where the foundation is is to reinforce it so it don't spread apart. The bins upstairs hold about 4,000 bushel of corn. The crib itself holds about 5,500 bushel of ear corn. elevator inside that uh, takes the grain up to the very peak in the cupola and then it falls by gravity down the spout to wherever you want to put it. That's it. This is one way in which a person got corn out of by taking these boards out and the corn would come out into the drags that were described in the shell itself. That was one of the ways it was done. This spot here goes up to the bins. If you want to take something out, fill a basket or something while you pull this little slide out and build your basket or bag and uh, carry it off if you wanted to. This is it cup elevator that takes the corn, beans, or oats, or barley, or wheat, whatever you want to put up overhead in the bins. This is the switch. Motor sitting right down here to run it. bins if you want to come in here with a truck or a wagon to get the grain out of the bins. You got slides in you pull the slides out and the grain will come down. To get the chain in the tunnel that goes through the middle of the ear corn crib you have some rods that you shove through the crib first with a hook on the end and you hook the end of the chain onto it and pull through on the bottom half of the toe and then you put it around this tailpiece we call it with the sprocket on put the rods back through on the top side back to where you started from Again, the inside of the corn crib where the corn is stored, and right down on the middle of the floor, you can see the Whitmores. Whitmores are a tunnel that is right up into two sections, uh, separated by a board. We're looking at the top section and the top of the board. On the groove on the sides of the top there, you have a bunch of little boards that are stuck in place. I will put a couple in place right now. at the bottom. Yeah, so. oh, right at the bottom. Just barely, just barely got them in. These boards are in place when the corn is dumped in here and then at the far end, the end of the crib is opened up and boards are pulled out from underneath the corn. That way the corn falls down into the red moors. Okay. 
as you can see there's a lot of bracing keep the hole to stop I see a picture of the corn crib. You had this hook that fastened around your hand and your wrist. And uh, you take a pure corn like this and the hook would come and take part of the husk off on one side and the other side your other hand took the other husk off and then you took and broke it across the back of your wrist. If you got good at it you could put 30 years a minute in a wagon box, but I never got good at it. After this got outmoded, well, they come with worn throw huskers that did it mechanically, powered by a big wheel, pulled by about four horses. And of course, they pulled the wagon behind the husker too to put the corn in. After the, and then pretty soon they had tractors that furnished the power instead of the horses to pull the machine. And then they took and hooked the, uh, took power from the tractor itself to power the machine instead of the big wheel to run it. And then after they got better mechanized, they had two rows at a time they took and pulled it with a tractor and, and pulled the wagon along the side. And then finally they had three row huskers. And, uh, then they got so they pulled the wagon behind the husker instead of off to one side. And that was about the extent of the husking business, and then pretty soon come the combines. What period of years are you talking about? Well, I don't know. I guess they used this hook here for a good many years. Uh, probably up until the early 30s before the mechanical pickers first come out. I husked my corn here in, in 1939 by hand. I think I only did it one year and after that I was had a mechanical picker to do it. This is a 1932 Lee Moon truck. One reason for buying it because it had a good heavy frame we had to move the fenders out here about a foot in order to get the motor in to run the shelter. The motor was in here, was near, not near big enough. This is a 468 cubic inch Buda diesel motor, which was taken out of a Greyhound bus. The radiator I bought out of the junkyard in Chicago paid $75. It's pure copper all the way through. Telephone number is kind of out of date. This was all put together in 1950 and that was a telephone number at that time and I never changed things. This is the cob stacker where the cobs come out. This gets swung around to the either way for a half circle that goes up into the truck. This is the dust bag that gets opened up and fastened into the leaf wagon and blow it all the leaf.